Good evening. Thank you very much for joining this conversation series. This is Taika Noki, Senior Vice Rector of the United Nations University. Tonight, we are very much pleased to welcome the Professor Kaoru Kitajima from the Kyoto University. So good evening, uh, Professor Kitajima. Good evening. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, I do. Yes. Good. And Great. maybe not only that the good evening, but the somebody may be uh, accessing to this conversation series from overseas or around the world, maybe for good morning and uh, good afternoon. So, uh, Professor Kitajima, would you please introduce yourself that how you came to challenge to that the tropical deforestation issues? Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me to this uh, very interesting forum. And um, I hope I can uh, make some, uh, you know, interesting conversation today. Well, I guess in terms of where I come from, getting interested in tropical deforestation, I think I was interested in um, conservation issues, environmental issues, and biodiversity since I was a, a child. By the time I was a middle school student, I knew I wanted to be a biologist. But I did not know anything about tropical forest issues until I finished my college and went to the United States for graduate school. That was in mid-1980s, exactly okay. 1984. May I intervene that what was the motivation to go to that graduate school in the U.S.? Well, the... Way it was was um, I loved biology, but more I studied, I realized I was curious that I probably wasn't getting enough um, by reading English and translating everything in Japanese. Mm -hmm. So I wondered what it's like to uh, read English, discuss in English, think in English, and oh. I wonder whether the world starts to look differently. So I see it's my curiosity, but. Definitely, um, going to the U.S. opened my door and um, opened my you know, perspective to tropical forests and tropical deforestation issues. Wow. So in U.S., uh, that was the opportunity for you to meet with that issue of the tropical deforestation. Yes, I was very lucky. Uh, uh -huh. I had a very wonderful professor as my advisor. And she introduced me to a lot of issues about tropical forest biodiversity, natural history. The, really something I did not learn when I was in Japan. So very, very high diversity, all sorts of interactions. And it's like how biodiversity creates more biodiversity, both in evolutionary time and how it's maintained, all that, that biodiversity is maintained in ecological mechanisms. It's totally fascinating. I see. But, but I wonder that you said in the mid of the 80s, that was the, the evolution of the molecular biology, wasn't it? Correct. Yeah, yes. uh, some of my you know, college friends became molecular biologists, but I took the issue of sort of global environmental issues. Mm. I was challenged in a way by some more senior professors. You cannot make conclusions in ecological studies because it's so complex. And uh, uh, yeah. it's a lot more complex issues, but I, as I was you know, uh, thinking of environmental issues as one of the most important challenges to the humanity, um, I just wanted to tackle that. And to some extent, yeah. it was a long time that I feel comfortable to talk about because you know, it took me 30 years before I can you know, feel comfortable to I talk see. about deforestation because it's very complex sociological issue as well as mm. biological issues. Yeah, I, I suspect that the, you know, from the broader audience, that the biology and ecology look similar. But mm -hmm. if in the discipline, that should be quite different. And also if you cons include the social issues in uh, natural science, mm -hmm. sometimes people may think, oh, she is not an, or, you know, scientist, right. wasn't it? Yeah, I think the that's why it took me 30 years before I feel I have something to say and contribute in relation to tropical deforestation. Over mm. these 30 years, I've been very lucky to interact with excellent uh, researchers, scientists, 
Some of them are working more directly to conservation issues. Others are working on very basic biological issues. And so I have been, I, it's been great uh, fun to know about the world, the complexities of the world and how um, they contribute to our human, you know, um, uh, existence. So. Okay, so then what is the major issue in the tropical deforestation or the broader sense that the, what is the environmental issue in the tropical forest now? Well, I think we knew even in 1980s when I was a graduate student that the loss of tropical forests can cause uh, climate change issues and yeah. um, affect, impact the uh, livelihood uh, of, of local people. stakeholders. It was known even in 1980s. And in the US, these things were talked before it may be you know, uh, discussed in Japan. Okay. But at the same time, um, I think some of the uh, you know, complexity and also the uh, impact beyond the tropics became widely recognized relatively recently. You know, you and I both are involved in the IPCC's you know, effort to yes. assess the impact of climate change and how people might be impacting climate change. So what's going on is now we know tropical deforestation go be, goes beyond the tropics when the you know tropical forests disappear it is not just the emission of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere but also there is a biophysical change which is your specialty you know how the change on heat balance and water vapor movement and all that extra heat is exported to the temperate latitude. And at the same time, those of us living in temperate zones, we do not think we are the ones cutting tropical trees, but we are driving tropical deforestation because mm. of our demand for meat and oil, food, energy. Mm. Um, these are driving the demands for uh, products that may yeah. be created by tropical deforestation. So there's oh, a strong yeah. link. Sometimes we forget that we cut the trees not because we want the woods, but we want the cleared land for Correct. the, as you said, meat and uh, crop and uh, energy. Oh, yeah. yeah, indeed, the, you know, the most recent report of, you know, IPCC report on climate change and land um, assessed that 20% of anthropogenic carbon dioxide emission is due to change in you know, land, uh, land, use. land use, especially tropical deforestation. That's a net number. So okay. there are some you know, regrowth of forests, but overall still the uh, cutting and the degradation of intact tropical forest is continuing. And it is a major contribution to climate warming. So. We have to remember that. I see. So that from your eco ecologist uh, point of view, that is a rumor, correct? Mm -hmm. That the expanded human activity caused the increased contacts with the serious zoonoses, mm -hmm. and we are suffering the COVID-19 as a consequence. Right. Um, so everyone knows, you know, about the you know climate change link, but I think we scientists all knew about the potential risk of zoonotic disease. Zoonotic disease is the kind of disease that is transmitted between animals and people, right? And um, so many other kinds of zoonotic diseases are not known in addition to this novel um, coronavirus caused for so-called COVID-19. There is a uh, West Nile virus and, um, you know, like um, SARS and AIDS and all these are zoonotic. Indeed, about 75% of some of the new infectious disease is due to, you know, zoonosis or zoonotic disease. Yeah. And this is caused largely by um, uh, tropical deforestation. The linkage is such that I mean, so the world is full of microbes, good ones and bad ones. They live together. That's part of biodiversity. Okay. And they're in balance. However, people come and destroy forest and live close to all sorts of disease uh, causing pathogens on wild animals. 
And so people cut forest, forests get fragmented. And so these animals have to move and people have also pigs and cows close to the remaining forest. And so yeah. these animals could be stepping stone for disease to skip from wild animals to people. So this increased contacts as well as people themselves and products moving from tropical countries to temperate zone developed countries, all of these are uh, causing you know, um, rapid disease. And also wild you know, bushmeat trade is something to be thought about too. Um, so local people eat meat, but yes. a lot of local people in rural areas are now migrating to big cities. They still mm -hmm. feel like they would like to have their you know, um, home food, which include wild animals. I see. You that mean not the cows, not the pork, but not the skin. Okay. Right. People believe there may be some mysterious power in wild animals. Mm -hmm. And then, so I think that kind of demand for um, animal trade and also there's pet trade. So trade of wild animals is also another reason why there is a closer contact between people and uh, tropical forest animals. Mm. So in either case, it's just the people encroaching tropical forest, either cutting trees and destroying habitat and also directly dealing with wild animals which may carry pathogens. These are two major reasons. So I see. Uh, yeah. Then what is your current research area? And mainly you're going to the field and doing the survey. Of course that under this COVID-19, you cannot go to the, ab go abroad about the, where, where do you do your study now? Well, I used to work in Latin America and recently in Southeast Asia, but I have started to work in Madagascar. Madagascar? Yes, Madagascar. Oh. It's a, you know, piece of Africa that became detached from Africa about 8,500 million years ago. A million <laughs> years ago, 100 million ago, okay. But so it has um, a very unique biodiversity. Some of you know the lemurs, you know, uh, the primate, relatively pri you know, a primitive group of primates, but plants and animals, birds, they're all very unique in Madagascar. However, it's one of the poorest country in Africa. So there is a very rapid uh, deforestation going. So I am starting a project to actually document one of the remaining, the, um, you know, stand of natural forest, dry forest, which hadn't been uh, studied much uh, by um, others. Actually, dry forests get destroyed first before rainforest in many parts of the tropics. But Why? What, what is the motivation? Yeah, why the dry forest is more useful for human beings? The climate is nicer for people. When it's, uh, you know, mm -hmm. raining and, mm -hmm. you know, year round, there are more disease for people. People didn't venture into cutting tropical rainforests and convert until relatively recently. First, dry forests get cut and turned into cow pasture, etc. That's all over the world. However, here, the development started late. However, Recently, during the last 30, 40 years, because of increasing population and increasing demand, uh, forests are disappearing. So it's uh, in a sort of very close to the tipping point that the balance between land sustainability and um, you know, um, development, it's very you know, precarious balance right now, so. I see. So that the, what, are there anything that the, could be related to that what's happening in Madagascar, the deforestation of the dry forest and the tropical rainforest to that other region? For example, do, are there any a linkage between, that the, between Japan and Madagascar about the deforestation? Yeah, you know, there are a lot of uh, potential resources among tropical biodiversity, right? There are a mm -hmm. lot of interesting, you know, um, sources of medicine and okay. aroma oils. And so some of the things from, you know, Madagascar and other African countries. Madagascar is famous for producing a lot of vanilla, but there are many other potential, you know, um, fragrance sources and other things. We just want to make sure that uh, there is a healthy balance of cash economy 
and subsistence economy and environmental protection. Because in Madagascar, they eat a lot of rice, just like us Japanese. However, the rice fields get destroyed. So the rice paddies, water fields, rice paddies get destroyed when there is a sedimentation that is caused by deforestation in the hills and mountains. Local governments are aware of it, Madagascar governments are aware of it. They would like to promote forest product, you know, protection, conservation and reforestation and restoration so that they can protect their rice field and food security. So mm. to me, it's a wonderful opportunity because there is a local will. It's not imposed by some developed countries okay. conservationists. There is a local interest in protecting forests, but they have limited means. So how can scientists help when mm. they want, you know, um, sustainable development? So I see a great opportunity in Madagascar in terms of how scientists can be working with local people <laughs> rather than deciding Oh, you cannot cut forests because it's bad for the climate. It's more than that there. I see. But I'm very happy to hear that the local government would like to take the balance between the development and mm -hmm. conservation. Mm -hmm. And also, I, I su suppose that the local people also that follow that idea. But are there any barriers we have or obstacles we have to overcome? I think the obstacles is uh, social issues um, because People cannot think about conservation and the environment while they are worried about health, sick lives, mm -hmm. and food. So we need to make sure that the um, um, development can bring sufficient you know, um, uh, quality of life. People are migrating from southern part of Madagascar with climate change. The drought is making it difficult for the cows to have enough grass. So people are migrating long distance from southern part of Madagascar to northern part. And it's very difficult to control this kind of you know, movement. So immigrations and um, uh, uh, rather destructive land conversion, it's partly because we can't, add, we are not, uh, you know, they can't address poverty issues with limited means. So how do we actually change? The social issues, political issues are very difficult. Even the government wants to conserve forests. They may not have enough means and uh, it's a very complex issue. So, but at least government and people who have lived there for a long time would like to protect their land and their land productivity. So mm. it's a complex issue because it's a true in everywhere, you know, the fight over water resources, fight over land, immigration issues. These are all very complex. Okay. I see Sandy on the screen. So that means that we have to stop here to have a more communication with the audience. So Great. Sam, please. Thank you very much, Professor Oki. Um, we have a lot of very interesting questions there. Um, the first one I would like to set is um, from Ms. Otilia Soforon from the Independent College in Romania. She asked, how can scientists convince politicians to act against deforestation? Mm. Scientists, I think um, we have been saying that uh, you know, uh, deforestation is bad for climate change, but it's very difficult for politicians to hear. I think sometimes it's difficult uh, because partly scientists talk about predictions, in my opinion, but we cannot say for sure. Often people like to hear black and white, but we, the best we can say is probabilities. A lot of times ecological things are not really uh, deterministic, meaning that things happen in interaction of multiple factors. So we can best talk in terms of probability. So how can we um, scientists get together to convince uh, general public, including politicians about these probabilistic risk factor uh, issues? We cannot be shy just because we cannot say something for 100%, but I think we need to think about the world is very complex, but that doesn't mean we cannot say anything. We can say with a certain probability. 
that's my best answer. Professor Aoki, Taika? Oh, thank you very much. That, I wanted to ask you uh, this question. So thank you very much, that question from Romania. Yes. Thank you. Um, the next question we have is actually from here in Japan um, or from someone here. Um, it's um, Naoya Ogaki from the Japanese Japan Overseas Cooperation for Volunteers. Um, this person asks, other than agroforestry, what, what are the known approaches to deal with deforestation and, what, and how should we tackle this to lead it to a more sustainable society? Okay, well, I think, um, thank you very much for the question and thank you for mentioning the word agroforestry because it is one of the most effective ways to uh, address simultaneously multiple uh, issues to achieve multiple sustainable development goals. So agroforestry is a great option. There is no question about that. However, we have to think about other drivers of deforestation. And this requires uh, political power issues, makes it very difficult because there is some capital. So the capital economy means money gets invested to make more money. So the whole society, including those of us in developed countries, have to shift this idea about the world. It's, it's a win, you know, the idea is you are a winner when you make more money quick. As long as we keep on doing, we cannot solve many issues, but this is social science issues. Taikan, any comments? Well, I, I never thought about the political drivers about but the agroforestry is, yes, of course, nice, but the, it was quite new to me that I know this terminology only a few years ago. So maybe if we have time, we, I wanted to ask you about more okay. about the agroforestry, but maybe that next question will be fine. Sure. The next question actually touches upon this um, around economics, around forestry, actually. Um, the question is, local par poverty is actually a big driver of deforestation in the tropics very often. What concrete steps can we take to address this? And this is from Susanna Rahman from the UNUIAGH in Kuala Lumpur. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that uh, um, um, question. Forests, I think historically, were, didn't belong to individuals. So it's a public land and it's in, in developing countries, tropical countries, the concept of forest ownership, which became the nation, emerged during a colonial time. Under colonial rulers, the forest became national land and then people, but they ignored the I mean, rights of the people who used to be living near forest and utilize forest resources. This is a very important issue to keep in mind. Um, so, I think the poverty emerged for these people living near forest, uh, partly because of the uh, restriction imposed by colonial rulers too. So um, it's a very complex issue that involves migration and uh, social balance, etc. But when I think about the history of Japan, how Japanese forest management emerged, it's never easy. There was a conflict when forest became overexploited in peaceful time in 17th century. Okay, civil war ended, the world became peaceful, and the people started to grow more crops, increased number of people, and then that actually resulted in shortage of food and poverty, and as well as deforestation and some natu natural disasters like um, landslide and flooding. Lot of conflicts, but in that conflict with combination of government authorities and the local stakeholders communication, some kind of agreement and norms emerged. So poverty is important issue, but it requires stakeholders to be discussing, meaning rural people need to be talking. It, there is no one right solution. Every country is different, every region is different, but we have to address 
poverty simultaneously if we want to address deforestation. Daikon. Yeah, I have never thought that, the, you know, that the forests are commons in a sense, that is very common all over the world. I have never thought about that. But is that really true? It's yes. not owned by, just by, owned by community. When the, um, the land tenure issue is actually a very important one. Mm. Those of us living in developed countries don't think it's that way. A piece of land belongs to someone and okay. that someone may be paying tax to the nation. But Japan as well, all over the world, forests, because there it's not managed actively, it's uh, land behind, land belong to anyone. Mm. But when, you know, um, we have to utilize forest resources, in every country there was some sort of access right recognized, but it wasn't land right that is legally well described, which caused the takeover by colonial government in many tropical uh, countries, as mm -hmm. well as some rich people of the land access right. It actually yeah. made a lot of people uh, poorer because of that kind of land right being taken away by national government. It's wow, a major thank issue. You. Yeah, let's go for the last question, San. Sure. sure. This is the last question. Um, this is from Maximilian Merston at the University of Sorbonne. Um, he asks, in order to foster more global cooperation concerning tropical deforestation, mm -hmm. what do you think individuals and governments can do? So specifically, like, how can we foster global cooperation in this field? Wow, million dollar question, a billion dollar question. Thank you for asking that question. I think the, um, there is a power in government. We need to think about national sovereignty. However, there is a power in getting together. I have to say, looking back the history of how the climate change negotiation evolved, there are some turning points over time when there are certain pride and political issues, but then some countries get together and say, hey, we got to work together. That's powerful. And I would like to see the world to run more like instead of competition rather than, oh, you are doing something successfully. Can we follow that good example at all different levels, local, regional, and the national and the international levels? How can we foster uh, cooperations? I think the UN decade of biodiversity is now switching to UN decade of restoration, right? I hope that the UN will be uh, playing important roles in fostering um, collaboration rather than competition among governments. That's the best hope. Daikan? Yeah, thank you very much. Because, yeah, the co otherwise the cooperation that the some country may clear the forest and sell it by the dumping price. And uh, so we need some, you know, uh, collaboration to that the nobody will be left behind. So yeah, I think that the sun, is it time to close? Indeed it is, Professor Oki. Okay. So it's gone fast. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, time runs fast. And I think that we can talk more than another uh, twice or three times of that what we had already talked. But the uh, time comes and I'm very much impressed by that the mainly about the enthusiasm of the Professor Tajima based on her knowledge of science, but want to solve that the social issue or the environmental issue together and uh, based on that her, yeah. So, and also that the hope that the people were very much uh, have some insightful from her talk that the, and very interdisciplinary uh, topic. I hope that now you understand that that today, tonight's title, that tropical deforestation, COVID-19, climate change, what's common? So I hope that the audience tonight could get some feeling about that, the what's commonality and how that expanding human activities are doing in the areas where we may not be visible for us in front of us, 
uh, that is related to our activity and that response will also be uh, coming to us. Is that my summary okay? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much for opportunity. And I feel humble because, you know, it's just uh, there is so much challenge. But I think when we work together, people created problems, so people should be able to solve problems. Thank you very much. Good words. So let me let us conclude and uh, close tonight's conversation series. Thank you very much, Professor Kitajima, and the, thank you very much for the audience from worldwide. So have a good night or they have a good day. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome and thank you. <laughs>